Good morning, Anne. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Matt. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, to start, I would love if you could introduce yourself to everybody and your role at Britannica. Sure. My name is Ann Getzikowski, and I'm Director of Early Learning at Britannica. And one of my primary responsibilities is editing our new website for parents, which is called Britannica for Parents. And what exactly is, is that website? Britannica for Parents is a website with articles, resources, recommendations, book reviews, lots of information for parents. And there's some um, information that's specific to the COVID-19 pandemic and how that's affecting parenting, how that's affecting schools, and how it's affecting learning at home. That's great. And that's a great segue for my first question. Um, we, we're all experiencing how this pandemic is affecting our everyday lives. Uh, one of the biggest impacts it's had has been on education. I know that that's a, this could be a large discussion, um, but if I'm a student right now, what do you think the biggest change a student is going through? Well, learning at home means relying on technology. Now, there certainly are examples where schools and school districts have provided hard copies of materials for children, but for most kids, they're now relying on these little devices to bring information and connection and ideas into the home. And they're relying on their parents to support their learning in ways that the parents haven't had to do before. So, um, you know, some children are thriving. Some children really enjoy that. For others, it's been much more of an adjustment. Um, it really has varied a lot from family to family and from school district to school district too. That was going to be one of my questions too, is what, what are, what's one struggle that you're seeing some students are, are dealing with, you know, transitioning from the classroom to, to at home? One of my biggest concerns is uh, a big picture um, issue that we've been thinking about and looking at even before the pandemic. And that's the whole concept of the digital divide, that there are families that have the resources to make sure their children have devices and have internet access, and there are families that don't. That vulnerability of the families who don't have access to um, learning tools that will benefit their children, that's been revealed now through the pandemic. So that's something that we're paying um, closer attention to, and when I say we, I mean educators, policymakers, the media, um, it's, it's revealed that there's a lot more work that we need to do to make sure that every child has access to learning. And would you say that's probably the biggest takeaway that we're learning um, through this pandemic and how it's affecting education? I think that's one of the most important issues if we're going to um, take responsibility for America's children and ensure that they stay on track and that, that they keep learning. That's, that's the big picture issue. It's almost like a chicken and an egg situation because um, some families just do not have access to maybe high-speed internet or to the necessary hardware to access online tools such as tablets, laptops. Do you think that you know, major institutions and education systems need to focus on getting new hardware into the hands of students that they can bring home first? Or is it more about creating the online curriculum, taking what's already been created maybe in the old model, but getting it back online? Um, because obviously students need to access the curriculum with some piece of hardware, but once they have the hardware, there also needs to be a robust uh, digital curriculum for them to access. I think right now it's clear the priority is the hardware. I mean, here in the Chicago area, in Chicago public schools, we have kids who still have not been able to access online learning. So I think getting devices in the hands of children and families and ensuring internet access is, is a huge priority. I think there are a lot of great tools out there that are working really well. So I'm not as concerned about that. I think that's, that's coming along. But I would also wanna add just to make sure that this is said as well, that online learning and digital learning does not work for every child. It doesn't work for every um, young child for sure. And my background is in early childhood and preschool. And for, for the very young children, 
online learning can be supplemental, but it, it will never be the, the core learning experience. Like very young children are hands-on learners. They learn in relationships. So that's always gonna be the case. So we can't focus on hardware for them. We, we need to be ex especially creative in how we support their learning. There are also older students, maybe students with special needs, or just students who it just isn't, isn't a good fit for them. And you know, there, there are certain kinds of technology that, that are just not going to fit the needs of every student. But we're getting better and better as we go along. You know, when you think about the, the internet of things and how plugged in we are, if we can use that technology to benefit learning in schools as well, just the use of, of smart speakers in the classroom. You know, we all have concerns right. about screen time for young children. And I'm really excited about the use of smart speakers in education because I think that will provide an alternative to being glued at a screen. It also allows students to engage um, different senses. It's a different kind of sensory experience when you're listening rather than looking. So I think there are all kinds of innovations in the future that will allow us to use technology in ways that again, individualized learning and are responsive to um, a student's unique needs and, and their developmental level, their, their age level and their developmental level. Do you think that we're in a, in a universal shift when it comes to education? Meaning that, do you think that there, we're gonna take a lot of these lessons and continue them once students get back into the classrooms? Do you see, some, do you see more of a hybrid model where students are learning in the classroom but also continuing their, their learning and their education online and, and really seeing school systems and teachers incorporating these digital tools that they now have um, really throughout the student's entire time at, at any type of school system. I, I do, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for creativity to think about what school really means and to individualize based on students' uh, abilities and interests. I think that's, that's fantastic. So we'll have the experiences from this time of reluctant online learning. We'll have a lot of hands-on experience from teachers, educators, students. We'll also have a lot of data. We'll be able to look at what worked and um, how engaged students were in different kinds of platforms. We'll be able to figure out what really benefited students and what didn't. So I think there's gonna be some really interesting ways of rethinking school, rethinking education. As we're thinking more creatively about the role of technology, I hope we'll also think more creatively about the relationship between home and school so that we won't think of it, it's either the teacher's job or the parent's job but we'll think of it as a partnership and that parents will be better informed and in a better position to um, understand the curriculum or to understand the expectations of children and that teachers will be very eager to work really closely with parents and form a partnership with them. I hope we'll see creativity in both ways. We'll see creativity in the ways in-person learning is combined with online learning and we'll see creativity in the ways that parents and teachers work together in the future. So Anne, thanks for joining us today. And before we go, do you think you could share one tip with parents to help them best assist with their children at home? Well, the tip that I've been um, focused on a lot recently is to focus on the children's core human needs, their core basic needs for the whole family, not just for the children. So I continue to encourage parents to have consistent bedtimes, um, to get outside and get some exercise every day, to eat healthy meals together. Like those anchor activities of the day are so important. And so the, the learning, the, the lessons, the homework, the online learning, there'll be plenty of time for that. You can work that around the, those basic core human needs, but just take care of each other and be well, and the rest of it will fall into place. Great. I think that's a great tip, Ann. Thanks so much for joining us today. I think education is a giant topic, one that we can talk more about. So I hope that you'll join us again. I would love to. Thank you. Thanks, Ann.